Okay, so a very, very good evening. Uh, I'm uh, giving you my welcome from my hometown, uh, from my house actually in, uh, in Belgium. And I'm uh, very, very uh, honored to uh, be the host in tonight's webinar. We have our expert uh, speaker here, uh, my good friend Cornelia Lohinova um, uh, from Bratislava. And uh, you may have uh, seen her uh, virtually around uh, during the course. Uh, and tonight uh, she will have an expert talk uh, with the title uh, you can see uh, right now here, uh, Developing Entrepreneurial Skills. Now, um, during the session, uh, we really would like to uh, send uh, you uh, to send uh, the questions uh, to the chat, uh, and we will come back to them at the end of the of the uh, the, the expert talk. Uh, let's say. Uh, also, we encourage you to send out tweets. You see the hashtag here, PBL course. If you want to mention us, uh, we are here as well with our Twitter handles. So, but make this uh, as interactive as possible. We will have some polls coming up um, later on uh, as well. Uh, so uh, I give the floor to you now, uh, Cornelia. You can switch to your uh, webinar now. And uh, I wish you uh, lots of success with your webinar. Yes, great. Thank you very much. I'm really happy to be with you uh, today. Uh, so my name is Cornelia Lohinova, and I'm a teacher at Hotel Academy in uh, Bratislava in Slovakia. And I'm a teacher trainer of Junior Achievement Entrepreneurial Programs and, of course, Eat Winning Ambassador. So now it's time to start. So in the next hour, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, how to develop entrepreneurial skills, uh, how to teach uh, innovatively, and how to use design thinking process or ideating and then how to set a small business uh, model or a small business company. So let's start. We already know that there is a big initiative of the European Union to promote entrepreneurship education at schools and develop entrepreneurial mindsets and skills. And why is it important? The future of Europe depends upon young people. According to European Commission, more than 5 million young people were unemployed in European Union last year. They are not employed, they are not in education, and they are not in training. And it's in our hands, of course, to prepare them for their successful future. Entrepreneurial skills are, in fact, the skills for life. So let's discover how to develop them. Entrepreneurs tend to start ventures that build on specific skills and knowledge they've already acquired in a certain occupation. But successful entrepreneurs have more general skills that enable them to start and grow their ventures. These skills rank in the top most desirable job skills too. So let's have a look. Goal setting is vital for the future success. Did you know that written goals are over 80% more likely to be achieved? An effective plan should give you a concrete timetable and set of clearly defined goals that are achievable. Problem solving means that we are able to evaluate situation, analyze why things are going wrong, think of different ways to solve the problem. Decision making is connected with problem solving. It includes gathering relevant information, weighing up the risks involved, pros and cons, taking responsibility, and finally making the decision. Organizing is connected with planning. It simply means uh, that we are able to set tasks and responsibilities to the right people. Teamworking is a crucial uh, for success. Teamwork means that people will try to collaborate using their individual skills and providing constructive feedback, despite any personal conflicts between individuals. Of course, different key roles are crucial here. Communication skills are important everywhere, and we should be able to speak clearly, concisely, listen accurately, negotiate with others, be polite and respectful. When negotiating, don't forget win-win principle, because when both parties win, the outcome is often better. Initiative and creativity more the word. 
Taking initiative means that we figure out what has to be done, and we do it. Readership is about taking responsibility for our actions, motivating others, and directing the team. There are three levels of leadership. Help leadership is taught at school. Teacher is always asking, does anybody have a different opinion? A good teacher encourages thinking of the students. This is the way how to support independence. Being active, it means give your children the opportunity to lead their friends in different activities, such as outdoor sports, music practice. Give them experience in public speaking. Encourage them to propose small speeches at events at school. Building coalitions, short and specific. For instance, raising money for charity. Propose a small business project for your children that could be done at your school. Inspire your pupils to think about what can we do to help environment or elderly people in neighborhood or other children, community. Of course, there are more skills and knowledge required if we want to be successful, like financial literacy, selling, promoting, and we should develop them at school too. In school, we were taught that failure is bad. Students' job is usually to figure out what the teacher needs are and to give the teacher whatever the teacher wants. Do you allow your pupils to fail? Don't you punish them for their mistake immediately before a grade? It's time for you now to take activity. I was once told by a great inspiring educator that after seven minutes of talking, we should give uh, activity to our students. But do you know who told me that? Uh, I haven't got a clue. No, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> now it's time for Paul. <laughs> okay, I will um, launch the poll that you already displayed here. So give me a few mo moments time. Okay. And uh, it should be there now uh, with the same options. Do you allow your pupils to fail? Well, you can explain better. Yes, uh, so does it mean that we usually at school we are waiting, like teachers, to, to catch the students when making mistakes, uh, <laughs> and then we punish them with the bad marks. So do you allow them to fail? Do you allow them to make mistakes? Don't uh, you punish them immediately? That's the question. Okay, uh, the answers keep uh, coming in. And um, we already have, uh, let's say, about uh, 100 answers, and uh, I think a, one, a bit less than 150 uh, are present here. Uh, a few moments ago, it was more than 155, I think, but well, you know how it is. With tablets, unfortunately, uh, the poll um, does not uh, work, uh, so people uh, taking part with the tablets, uh, they might have problems. Okay, so maybe they just can... Uh, yeah, the so that, that's uh, a pity again. So they, there might be a few people with a device that doesn't allow to take part in the poll. Uh, I will wait a few more seconds um, yes. because uh, I see the votes coming in and I will uh, close the poll now. And I have uh, now uh, 152 people that um, can take uh, part in, in the poll, and uh, let's say about 30 uh, are still thinking. <laughs> Maybe they are a bit nervous to fail in this uh, polling <laughs> exercise. But it's good because thinking is crucial, so it's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. But remember the game tonight at 9 o'clock? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think I will uh, close the poll. Uh, although uh, I see people still voting, uh, but uh, I guess we will have uh, a result by now uh, with uh, more than 120 people who, uh, who voted. So here we go. Uh, there will be more votes coming uh, later on. I will uh, close the poll now and then I will uh, just wait for the processing. It takes uh, some time, uh, like maybe 10 seconds, before I can display it. Yes, so 
I'm and, quite curious, uh, but I think that I know the answer. <laughs> uh, we will see. We will I, I will, see. yes. And don't forget that fail means first attempt in learning. <laughs> okay, I. You see the uh, answers there? So, uh, yes, I didn't expect this. <laughs> yes, always is quite. Ah, it's a big amount. Yeah, but then of course you have uh, the the best teachers here uh, taking part in in uh, in this yes. course and, and in this webinar. So sorry that I I just <laughs> I should have expected this. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, yes, I, I was I was counting with this. It depends on task, of course. Okay, but thank you for for your answers. Uh, it, it's it's nice because I think that the school should be the place for making mistakes. Uh, maybe you the same also in other countries, but we know that parents are more and more protective, and children need to fail. Parents don't let them fail, <laughs> so they need to fail. But at the same time, they have to know that failure is inevitable part of life, and they should know how to cope with it and learn from it. And now I will uh, tell you a very nice uh, quote from one company. Uh, so there is, uh, they have like the motto, fail often and fail early. It's a motto of one innovative company because without failure there is no progress. To come with innovative solutions means to try and fail and try again. And the world needs innovators and entrepreneurs to design solutions for today's problems. We know that entrepreneurship is about initiative and making things happen. And now I'm going to introduce you an approach that is widely used in business and becoming popular in learning too. Design thinking is a method of problem solving developed largely by Stanford University professors. They sought to codify a product design process that emphasized creative solutions to meet users' needs. And the idea had spread across the country and across disciplines. Design thinking is a confidence that new, better things are possible and that you can make them happen. And this is entrepreneurial approach. So how it works? The steps of design thinking can be described in several ways. But the basic steps are Define the problem, understand the users, brainstorm solutions, and prototype, and then produce. So let's have a look at the first phase. The first phase relates to finding a problem to work with. Students identify, select, and concretize the problem they want to design solutions for. As a teacher, you introduce the overall frame and topic of the project. You facilitate the composition of strong design teams based on competencies, resources, and learning profiles. But from time to time, it is good just to set teams randomly. Because in a real world, you usually can't choose your team partners. You should be able to collaborate with anybody to make a desirable outcome. It is important, of course, to define team roles and areas of responsibility. And don't forget, we know it's already to let them strengthen team spirit before they start real work. But forming design teams can happen before the actual process begins or in connection with generating ideas and choosing a problem. How to do this? Open space method is the answer. We can give students a challenge or driving question, but we can also give them the case study or a theme and ask them to set the challenge. For instance, in geography, I give them an article with statistics that shows degrees of tourism income in our region. I can give them the challenge, of course, how might we increase the tourism in our region? But to make them more active, they are asked to set the challenge themselves. Open space method gives the students an opportunity to explore the topic, set challenges, and then select a focus for their further work. The students are placed in a large circle. All the students write down problems connected with the topic, one on each piece of paper. As the students write down problems on a paper, these are placed on the floor. 
and this part of the technique is conducted in silence. When all pieces of paper have a problem written on them and are placed on the floor, the students walk around and read all the written problems. In our case, it could be, for instance, the region has not enough attractions, there is a lack of advertisement, and so on. After this, they help each other to structure and group the problems into sub-themes. After this process, the different sub-themes are presented in plenum, like promotion, or events, and so on. And now the students choose the sub-themes they are most interested in working with. This way, the design teams are formed according to their interest. Teacher can exclude or combine certain subtopics and prearrange how many students each design team should include. It's recommended to have four or five people, no more. Of course, instead of using big papers and the floor, you can use sticky notes or online tools. But open space method brings movement to the classroom and it's really attractive for the students. Afterwards, teams try to define a problem out of the cards they collected. They use mind mapping on a large piece of paper or, of course, online tool, and each design team writes down the sub themes of their choice. The students reflect individually or discuss together which challenges and problems the sub theme brings. And, of course, they have to link them to the target groups. For instance, for the subtopic promotion of the region, problems can be there are no signs in towns about attractions or no information about interesting activities for young people. The students can write down problems, target groups, and related issues on posters, and then structure them into clusters. The last step is the design teams choose and define just one specific problem within their chosen sub theme that they wish to focus on in their design process. In our case, it could be the problem statement, how might we, how might we create suitable advertisement with relevant information for young people? Then the last step in this first phase is sum up. In this step, the students present what they have worked out. It is important that after all phases that teams meet present the result of their work, share their experiences, and give feedback, and feed forward to the other team. And now the question is, do you know what the feed forward is? Time for activity again, of course, um, after seven minutes. <laughs> so what do you think about this picture? That's my question. You can see this calculation. Just write to the chat box, please. What do you think about this? Okay, so this calculation. Uh, white spots, yes. <laughs> okay, so what are you doing now? Great, you are giving me feedback now. Almost great, yes, one mistake. And now my question is, how can I improve it? Now write down to the, question, uh, to the chat, how can I improve this? <laughs> okay, correct. How can I improve this? What I wanted to show you is the difference between feedback and feed forward. Okay, great. My, my math was not very good, so, uh, but you, you discovered the problem. Okay. For feedback, we ask, what do you think of it? And it focuses on current performance or the past. Feed Forward offers constructive guidance on how to improve. So we ask, how can I improve it? This is important, of course, both of these feedback and feed forward is important for students' progress. So thank you for chatting, <laughs> and now we will go on.
The second phase of design thinking is perceive. In this phase, students should understand the problem. They ide identify what they think they know, what they think they want to know about the defined problem or challenge. Students get the relevant information, do research also in the field if it's possible. They prepare questionnaires, talk to relevant people, also local authorities or experts. It is very important to relate problems to target group needs. So important part of this phase is to identify users. One way to do this is persona. What is persona? It is a fictive user profile that represents the primary users of our design solution. So let's have a look. This is persona. Product can be successful if the users want to use it. It is clear in business world. So, uh, sorry, okay. Now, now I just can see in the chat that uh, they can ha can't hear me. Hmm? Well, just speak uh, as loud as oh, you can. Okay. Yes. So this is clear in business world, and this is why we have to focus on the final users and learn more about them and understand them. The more we know about the user the more likely it is that we can create successful product or design solution. Students should think of a very concrete persona or target group. Think of the age, what are the hopes and wishes of those people, what they like to do, what they don't like, how they behave, how they feel. Let the students make a hand-drawn picture of the persona and create a detailed story about this. This is the example of persona that we described when uh, finding solutions for how to assess entrepreneurial activities. You can see that we draw the picture of a real teacher uh, who was passionate uh, but has difficulties. Uh, so it is important that we really uh, know who is going to be the uh, final user and we try to understand him very well. So then the next phase is to design think, uh, to prototype in this design thinking process. The objective is to get as many ideas as possible about how the challenge can be solved and then actually shape these solutions. Students ideate solutions and then choose one or more of them and prototype. It means design solutions. And how to do this? Now, we all know, I think, that we all know the word brainstorming. But do you know who invented this? Advertising executive Alex Osborne began developing methods for creative problem solving in 1939. He was frustrated by employees' inability to develop creative ideas. In response, he began hosting group thinking sessions and discovered a significant improvement in the quality and quantity of ideas. Now it is used everywhere, but we should keep in mind following rules. Don't say no, instead say yes and. Don't interrupt and really each idea is good, even crazy one and so strange. Uh, we should focus on quantity, not quality, and create uh, on other ideas uh, that are built on, t on uh, others. But there are various techniques to find solutions, of course. We can write the problem to the middle of the mind map and let students brainstorm solutions. After five minutes, we can stop activity and cut down the number of solutions. We can use sticky notes or online tools for this activity, whatever you know. But we can try reverse brainstorming, go backwards. Turn a problem on its head by asking, how can you make the problem worse? How can you achieve the opposite effect? Generate opposite solutions and then turn everything on its head again and generate ideas for solving the original problem. So now it's time for you to brainstorm. 
Great to the chat, please. How could they have a wash without water? Okay, they can dry. <laughs> And they can imagine there is a water and they will be clean. Okay. <laughs> Papers, yes. Towels, paper, grass. Great. Any crazy idea? <laughs> Any strange? Yes, sand. Dig in the mud. <laughs> oh, lots of ideas of the teachers. Oh, dancing, there was dancing, very nice. <laughs> so when we dance, yes. <laughs> Waiting for the water, walking in the rain. Okay. So now, yes, you have shown that you can brainstorm and then you are very creative teachers. Swim in the sea, maybe the sea, there is a water, water but <laughs> okay. Like, Yes, great. So let's move on. After brainstorming, students have lots of good ideas how to solve problem, but they need the best idea. So it's time to be rational and realistic and critical in a constructive way. Don't just say no. It is important to say no because they choose one solution and describe what is their solution. How does it work? They can also choose two solutions. One can be the crazy one, most innovative, and maybe difficult to determine. Another can be the safest one. In this phase, you should ask students to come with innovative solutions. Ask them why they think it is innovative, why it solves the problem of the user. Try to get the students out of their comfort zone, giving them ideas to make more radical innovations. After choosing the solution, it is time to prototype. It's important for the design process to let students visualize their ideas. Prototype is a demo model of the solution. Prototypes are used to give the audience better understanding of what you mean with your solution. It can be drawing, it can be physical prototype made from Lego, modeling stuff, video, 3D model, whatever. It depends on the type of solution, of course. Prototyping gives pupils the freedom to experiment without concerns uh, about failing. It is possible to provide a lot of materials. Uh, if it is possible, then it would be great to provide a lot of materials, tools, clay, uh, whatever, cardboard, uh, boxes, tape, glue. Uh, straws, balloons maybe, just other, lots of things which can be used to make models of innovative solutions. There is a picture of a trolley, you can see on the right, of a Danish school. The students use this for uh, their prototyping. So it is great, teachers can uh, get this trolley and move to the classroom and use it. Do you know the maker movement? Makers are people who like to figure out and fix problems with their hands. Enable this to your students and allow them to make, to create something with their hands. Even my 18 years students really like it. The last phase of design thinking is present and produce. The objective of this phase is to finish product and present it to others. Therefore, it is, it is uh, important really first to present and then if it is possible, it would be great to turn the product into reality. If it's not possible, so then we can just present it. Teams describe their problem and the solution and explain why it is relevant to the users. They can use elevator pitch for this. And then they give feedback to each other and evaluate the project. Now the question is, do you know what elevator pitch is? Branding is the process of adding stories and extra values to a product. Teach students to develop an elevator pitch for their solution. It means brand it. Elevator pitch should be interesting, memorable, and brief. 
the term itself comes from a scenario of an accidental meeting with someone important in the elevator. If the conversation inside the elevator is, uh, is interesting and value-adding, then the conversation will continue after the elevator ride. You can use this elevator pitch to create an interest in a project, idea, product, or in yourself. A good elevator pitch should last no longer than short elevator ride of 30 seconds or one minute. Of course, when presenting project, you can give each team, for instance, two minutes, but not more. They should learn to be clear, precise, and to the point. Feedback is the essential part of the whole process. The feedback should be constructive and respectful. The design team getting feedback should consider it a help and not become defensive instead of receiving. The design team getting feedback has to remember uh, to remember to lay down important points from the feedback or to use later. Teach pupils to give and receive feedback. It's not easy. It's not e easy even for us, for adults. They can also write, of course, their feedback on sticky notes and place it on a board. And I will show you in the end that there is also a very nice template uh, for giving feedback. Tony Wagner, author of Creating Innovators, uh, The Making of Young People Who Will Change the World, uh, writes that today's students exist in an innovation economy. They need to become not only problem solvers, but also problem seekers. Those who can look for solutions in contexts where one never previously existed. Problem-based learning, project-based learning, design thinking, they provide the opportunities to, to move us toward innovation, toward innovating our classrooms and schools. If you enable your pupils to connect it with setting their own small business, then it will be an unforgettable experience. How to do this? The process is very similar to design thinking. So let's have a look. The first step you already know is identify problem, then suggest possible solution for a concrete user and design product. But as Tony Wagner said, people need to become problem seekers. So it is useful if you praise children for pointing out small problems or setbacks in their lives that cause them distress. Inspire them to pay attention to the problems and complaints of their parents, friends, other people. There are lots of complaints everywhere. And then brainstorm solutions on how to resolve their troubles. If they focus on positive solutions instead of focusing on problem itself, it will help them to create profitable ideas in their business, maybe, in the future. Or at least they will have positive mindset. So if people are complaining, you can be happy. Let's take it as an opportunity to help them with our solution. Or it can be an opportunity for business idea. And people who have this problem maybe will pay me if I solve it. Motivate children to imagine real customers with real problems. Let them think of benefits that product or service can bring customers. Are there already competitive ideas? Never mind. Entrepreneurs believe that almost everything can be improved. Important question is, what I can do to make my product unique? Financial literacy is a must. It is useful to teach children about money at an early age. Teach them about how much it would cost to produce a product. Give your pupils the opportunity to earn their own money through their own small businesses. It is also important to teach children about promotion and selling. We know that selling is involved in every part of life. Life is about selling. To get a good job, you must sell yourself to your employees as well. Success in business is also about selling. So encourage your children to start with small projects, like selling their old toys, starting a lemonade stand, or selling handmade goods. Encourage them to create their own marketing materials for their business idea. Teach them to promote 
to create short elevator pitch to attract audience and of course teach them to give feedback. You can give your students also opportunity to create a business model that is non-profit and helps community. And this way you can add a real value to your design thinking process in your project-based learning. But now, again, Bharat, it's your turn. It's time for poll. Do you organize entrepreneurial activities in your classroom? It can be for profit, for instance, like I, I mentioned already, the stands, the homemade goods, uh, selling toys, making, and for example, selling school magazines. It can be also non-profit, like uh, community projects, cleaning, organizing events at school. So it's time for, for Paul. Okay, just a moment. Yes, so you have these options and try to vote about this. Okay. There are lots of possibilities. It doesn't need to be like whole business uh, projects, like mini company or something like that, but activities that really support these, all these entrepreneurial skills and mindsets. Okay, we have uh, more than 100 votes by now, and they keep coming in. Mm. So now, great. They are very quick with this. Yes, so uh, about 50 people can still cast their vote. And again, as I wrote in, uh, read in the chat, um, people with iPads seem to have problems with uh, this voting system. Okay, so maybe we, you, you can just write to the chat your answers. Okay, I will wait a few more moments and then I will close uh, the poll. And then we can share the results. Okay, well, about 40 haven't voted yet, uh, but well, let's close the poll anyway. Yes. And then uh, we will wait a few more seconds for the processing, and I will share the results. Who will be the winner? Yes. So now Do you think? <laughs> uh, maybe B? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, I do know. I do know. I see what the results here. <laughs> what? Oh, you but you I will, know already. I will reveal them in a moment and they should uh, come now. You see them? Okay, B. <laughs> yes, but very seldom, so yes. Okay, it's great uh, because, uh, yes, 75 people answered this way. Yes, And I, I have already seen lots of uh, business projects uh, mm -hmm. of friends of my training group, entrepreneurship in education. They really made very nice things with their uh, pupils. Okay, but another poll, Bart. So yeah, so we go to the next slide. Teacher? Yes. Okay. So what about your school? Does your school support entrepreneurial activities? What about your your headmaster? Or, so is it is there any support? And you have these three options. Some of schools I know that they they have this as a part of the curricula, but some schools are very traditional and they they don't allow anything like this. So now. I'm really curious about this. Yes, so how many people do we have? Uh, uh, well, we have uh, about 60 who still have to vote. Yes. Now. And uh, 192 um, or more, 93, have been connected to vote. 
So let's uh, wait for a few more seconds. Yes, great. And again, same question for you. What will be the top answer? Uh, B. <laughs> what about you? Well, I have the answers here. Ah, okay. So, um, you gave me this role of poll poll manager <laughs> before, before that. that uh, what, yeah. what was your okay. Is that feedback or is that <laughs> Okay, uh, let's close the poll and um share the results in a moment. Yeah, and A and B could also be possible, both maybe, well, I don't know, it, it's maybe not so clear for some, we'll yes, see. Yes, uh, I mean, some schools have their they curricula, but some uh, in their curricula, yes, B. <laughs> yes, so, uh, yes, uh, there are many schools, and I know about them, that they have even special subjects connected with this. And there are, of course, schools that can enable teachers. I mean, they don't, uh, or they just allow teachers, that, that's the way, to organize them. But some of the schools don't allow even. So that was my question. So great. Uh, school enables and then if teachers are active so then probably they organize it and there are a lot of schools that there is no support but uh, it's okay I started that uh, in my school without support as well because uh, yes I just think that sometimes I just don't obey and don't follow the rules uh, it is important when I want to move forward that's my strategy, <laughs> that I try to avoid um, rules that I don't agree with. I mean, uh, in, in school, not, not, not everywhere, but there are sometimes not very club. Okay, so let's move on. I want to show you now a very useful tool for creating this small business project. Uh, but also for other projects. Uh, so uh, uh, I will show you this tool now when I will, I will try to uh, share my screen. But first, uh, this is the result already. So that is like Canvas, Lean Canvas, where you can invite, or you can share the link and uh, all collaborators can, uh, can work on the same uh, Canvas. So that's, that's about uh, these uh, steps that I was talking uh, about. So like problem, solutions, uh, you have even here down, you have a uh, like brainstorm space that uh, you can think of uh, unique value proposition, why is your product unique? And then uh, advantage, or th that is section for customer segment, and then channels, so how to sell, how to promote. And then, of course, uh, there is a part for active planning, so what should be done, wh who will do it, when will do it. And then uh, we should think of uh, the cost and uh, price of the product. So now I will go, I will try to share my screen and I will show you this. this tool, okay, it's here. So this is Canva is there. And it's very easy. You can just uh, click on Create Canvas and you have lots of possibilities for service design, for business, project management. So uh, when I click on business, you can uh, choose business model Canvas, lean Canvas, it's, it's uh, a bit more simpler, I mean simpler than this business model Canvas and then feedback canvas even, and SWOT analysis. So lots of really nice templates, and you can just choose when I click on the link canvas and write a title, email, and this code, and then when I click on start canvanizing, then I get the email with the link to my canvas, and even the link to uh, editable, like editable uh, link. 
and that I can share and invite others to join and uh, create Canvas together. It's like a very simple business plan. And there are lots of others. I, I wanted to show you even uh, like projects. So this is Project Canvas. So maybe we will have a look at Project uh, Demo. And so this one, you have all these uh, even explanations with question marks, what should you put to this template. So very nice and very useful tool. Yeah, I have a question in the chat, is it free? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You just go there and you can use, I, I have created lots of uh, these canvases with my students and even uh, like, like various kinds of these canvases in the full feedback as I uh, have shown you already. Okay, so I will stop sharing now and we'll move on. So what I want to show you now is uh, another very nice website. There was a survey initiated by European Commission about entrepreneurial teaching, and 90% of teachers replied that they need entrepreneurial tools and methods to apply them at school. So this is uh, like virtual guide to entrepreneurial learning, what I'm going to show you now. It's a part of the entrepreneurial school, and it aims at supporting teachers uh, in applying the entrepreneurial learning in several subjects and learning environments. And you can find 127 tools there, um, and, but not each of them are suitable for you. But some of them are simple, some of them are more complicated, but I will go and show you this. So this is the web page. You have it uh, then in my presentation as well, the link to this. And if we click on this tools and methods, go to the search, then uh, you can see that uh, this also translated uh, to various languages. But we have these tools, we can uh, choose age level, subject, teaching issues, learning outcomes, and then 127 results. So lots of nice ideas, really. Uh, this was made by teachers. So if even if you, if you go there, you can, uh, you can upload your lesson or your tool or your best thought. Of course, it's not uh, then a part of this uh, like uh, automatically because there is a board of professionals and they review these methods because they want to keep it very professional. So if you go there, you can see there, is, there are also two for primary law and uh, maybe I will go there, teaching issues. You want to support entrepreneurship or you want to, I don't know, it, it's about uh, assessment and evaluation, or you want, uh, we, we go to this learning outcomes to support creativity or taking risk or whatever. So if you just go there and you can select and uh, really you have lots of nice ideas. What I wanted to show you now I will uh, I will stop the sharing again uh, because there is one tool that I wanted uh, to show you. There is like a um, very nice uh, tool from uh, one uh, school from uh, Great Britain. Skills and Strengths Quiz. It's like self-assessment tool in quiz format for children to identify their own strengths and uh, lifelong learning skills. The quiz can be used at the beginning of the project to give children just like a starting point when they identify uh, roles and responsibilities. And also it can be like baseline for um, target setting and self-assessment. I give this, not this kind of, uh, of uh, quiz, or, but a bit more complicated at the beginning and in the end of the project. But this one is very nice because uh, it can give like clear view even to children what the skills means. And they can uh, then keep like evidence of the, uh, how, how they developed those skills. So that is one tool. And another one, you can find that uh, in this virtual guide to entrepreneurial learning. 
this one is creative cards. So it's a set of 54 cards with really lots of ideas and exercising, focusing on problem solving. And you can see there are icebreakers, mapping, the road to the problem. So really great set of cards. And you can download, everything is free. So you can download them and use in your classroom. This was uh, produced by a junior achievement uh, organization, like non-profit organization from Norway. Uh, I think that this will be helpful for you if you want really to solve, to, to ideate, solve problems and whatever. Uh, but now I think that uh, there, are, there is time <laughs> to stop my activity. And if you have any questions, uh, so please feel free to ask me. Thank you for your attention. And uh, so I will now go to the chat and have a look. Or maybe Bart, can you tell me? If yeah, uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, Cornelia, thank you very much for your great uh, talk. Uh, I will repeat it when we finally will uh, close the session in a few more minutes. Uh, but for now, uh, I would like to uh, have a look at, at the questions. Now, as you can see, we had. Uh, at this moment, we have 206 attendees, which is really, really uh, quite a lot. And I think we hit the ceiling uh, with uh, the WebEx uh, license. Uh, normally, uh, we have a license for 200, uh, so, but some seem to <laughs> sneak in. Uh, well, anyway, uh, so uh, I had some questions about uh, the recording. It, it, uh, it's being recorded uh, right now, and hopefully uh, everything works fine, so I will uh, need to convert it uh, tonight and then uh, it will find uh, uh, a place somewhere at the platform so you will have to uh, you can you will be able to to look back uh, and and uh, people who suffered from sound uh, problems uh, hopefully they they uh, will have a better experience uh, then uh, other questions um, so um, I, yes i try to go through them but Maybe you can just point out some of them mm -hmm. because uh, uh, it's just uh, appreciation, uh, nice tools. Uh, the link of the tools, um, yes, uh, I, I put them in in the in the chat uh, because you cannot uh, uh, directly click them uh, from uh, the slide, uh, but we can um, maybe have them. In, in a list uh, somewhere. I don't know whether you want to, to share your presentation. Maybe we can discuss it later, but uh, otherwise... Uh, this, this guide, I, I, yeah. I put the link. And middle school. You, you yeah, I put all the, the guides, uh, all, all the links there, but we will... Re we will uh, Maybe have them in, in, the, in the Facebook group or in the platform. Uh, we will tell the Benjamin to add uh, the links there. I will add, uh, yes, of course. And uh, what else? Now, I forgot what I wanted to show you. Sorry. Now, I will share my, <laughs> can I? <laughs> uh, and yeah, you have uh, two more minutes. Uh, we, we need okay. really need to finish within one hour. <laughs> Very quickly. Uh, what this one. So design thinking for educators. There is a free download toolkit. So this link I will also share with you. Yes. So uh, th there is really great resource, maybe a bit complicated, but really very detailed steps how to apply design thinking for educators. So this will be useful for you if you want to use it. And of mm. course, I will put it to Facebook and to platform and uh, uh, everywhere. <laughs> okay, perfect. So um, one more minute uh, for a final question. Otherwise, uh, as I said, I will repeat uh, what I uh, said a few minutes ago. Thank you, thank you very much for your uh, great presentation. And. Um, I think it was uh, highly uh, appreciated uh, here. Uh, and 
you can turn back to the presentation, uh, let's say, from tomorrow on when the recording will be available. So I wish you, from my side, um, a very nice evening. And uh, Cornelia, if you want to uh, say a final word, uh, then uh, we can close the session. Yes, of course. I want, I want to thank you all for time spent with me. <laughs> And uh, maybe just the last word, yeah, there, there, I, I, there was a question whether uh, you should adopt it. You should adopt, of course, in every type of school. You can uh, really uh, develop uh, all these skills and uh, mindsets from the early age. We were born with it. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's, it's really suitable everywhere. And maybe I, I, I just want to encourage you maybe to encourage your children to do uh, activities that are also non-profitable. Let's teach them not only about ICT tools, but also how to be human beings. So it, it, it would be great. So I just wish you uh, all uh, to have fun in your classrooms and, uh, and maybe shining eyes of your children when doing activities with them. So thank you very much. Thank you too. So you mean uh, human beings like uh, the ones that uh, can be very hungry? Sorry? You mean human beings like the ones that uh, can be very hungry? <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I, I, uh, we, we sometimes uh, we, we are talking too much about tools <laughs> and uh, digital I know what you mean. Oh, no, no. Everything and <laughs> I will end uh, the session and, uh, and we'll have something to eat. Uh, so uh, goodbye once again, and uh, see you soon in another event. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.